Cyber Realistic is another contender for a fantastic realistic style checkpoint and in this video we'll be running some tests and seeing whether we can achieve some fantastic results. Be sure to drop a like on the video and subscribe to support the channel's content and check out the Patreon. But enough talk, let me give it to you bite sized. So Cyber Realistic is a realistic style checkpoint developed by Cyberdelia and promises a versatile photorealistic model which was rigorously tested by blending various models to achieve the desired output. The checkpoint provides us with a range of sample photos which look good and distinct from one another, including some food items, environment pieces and a very good boy. One of the key strengths is in the ability to effectively process textual inversions and LoRa's providing accurate and detailed outputs. We also require minimal prompts to get good results and the page ends with some suggested resources, including the cyber realistic negative embedding which we will need to download. The description was brief and to the point but didn't provide any recommended settings so we'll have to base our tests on the settings used within the provided example images. Moving on to our first test, I copied over the generation data from an example image to see whether the checkpoint was functioning as expected by giving us the same result as the author. And our image came out very similar with a slight difference in the posture and hue that has lost some of that yellow glow but nothing world ending and the quality is still good. I also wanted to see what quality differences we may get if we remove the cyber realistic negative embedding and it does make a significant difference where we have improved lighting and some error connections with the consistency and multiple candles. So worth using the cyber realistic embedding with this checkpoint and it may even provide good results on other checkpoints. Now let's move on to testing different settings so we can see what compromises we can make between performance, quality and getting optimal results. I've generated my own image which had no quality problems and maintained the excellent results we've received so far so my confidence is high on the quality front. Starting with the sampling steps, I tested a range from 10 to 50 which also leaves some room to compare the resulting images and upon comparison there's no noticeable difference beyond the 20 steps. The images all have the same degree of quality with minor differences here and there but nothing significant enough to warrant a higher sampling step and in some instances a higher sampling step produced a worse result on the necklace. But at the same time a sampling step of 10 produced a far lower quality result especially with the glasses which had this orange artifact in the lens and the clothes were all jumbled together so worth going for around 20 as the optimal result. Now turning to samplers, I've tested our regular options which include the two popular DPM, 2M and SDE Kares samplers and the EULA A and DDIM samplers to see how they perform with this checkpoint. The best result came from 2M Kares as the checkpoint recommended but DDIM also provided excellent results. The images look very similar and capture what we'd expect from our prompt. But SDE Karas added a denim jacket while EULA A gave us a plain background. I think 2M Karas and DDIM are the clear winners of this test. Looking at the CFG scale, we get decent results across the board but I think 5 to 9 gives the best results without any harshness or losing too much detail. I think lower values work far better than higher values. Then lastly for the clip skip, 1 gives the best results across the board while 2 and 3 look odd with the mouths, lighting and composition. 4 went and did its own thing where the top image lacks the glasses and the bottom isn't too bad but I think the clip skip of 1 is the best option for this model. Moving on to some further tests, running a few prompts for the skin tone provided us with some nice distinctions between pale to black with purple not working to change any skin colours. I do wish we had a darker skin tone as black is more of a brown but there is a nice selection here to choose from regardless with a faint difference between olive and tanned. We also didn't get any other changes which is good as we only wanted to modify the skin tone rather than the clothing or background. But on the topic of darker skin tones I ran some ethnicity prompts and we did get a slightly darker skin tone when using African or Jamaican in our prompt. Our other prompts, like Chinese and Japanese, looked accurate alongside Indian. But the Latino prompt looked like a tanned version of the other faces and not too distinctly different so perhaps someone can pick up on what's missing but it seemed to do a decent enough job of understanding how people in generalized areas may look. On the age prompts, these worked completely fine and gave us a clear distinct set of looks 
depending on the age we specified, with young and mid-20 not having much of a difference in terms of looks. And on our style prompts, as you probably expected, we aren't getting any unique kind of styling happening with this checkpoint, which gears itself more towards purely photographic slash realistic styles, likely benefiting from prompts like film grain and dramatic over anime and watercolour. Testing objects, we get a range of interesting results across three different seeds. Starting with the water, we get a normal looking glass of water, a nice cold looking glass of water, and then the type of water Logan Paul would sell to children. Two of the pencils came fresh out of a detective thriller, while the middle one looks more like a crayon, and our chewing gum looks more like jawbreakers, or those gumballs you will find in those public vending machines from the olden days. The results aren't bad quality wise, but there is a diverse interpretation of what I would have thought would be simple objects, which may be a positive or negative, depending on your objectives for this model. Then looking at animals, we get some high quality results, which do vary in terms of accuracy. The rabbit looks fine, and other than the long neck, I don't see any major problems, and the snake is okay, but there are some artifacts, and it does seem to get confused with the anatomy. Then with the scorpion, we ended up with some kind of locust, grasshopper type insect which looks nothing like a scorpion, so good quality in terms of the image but accuracy is a problem from this test. Our last test will be trying out some landscapes and the results were pretty good in all honesty. The beach and forest look great and simple but the supermarket caught me by surprise as we have the interior with stock produce while not being detailed does look convincing at a distance. We've got lots of variety including fruits, vegetables, packaged goods, signs, lighting, ventilation and reflections. Not a bad set of results. I think in summary, this checkpoint produces good results, especially with people, but does lack accuracy in some other areas. But hopefully you found this overview helpful, and if you did, then drop a like on the video, subscribe, and check out the Patreon for image files from all my videos. This is Bite Size Genius, and I hope you enjoyed.